Thank you once again for joining us today at Matoka TV studio. All right, today in the clip you're about to watch with me right now, the God servant Apostle Arame Osai unveils the shocking secret on how to encounter God in the place of prayer. All right, do wait to listen to this particular clip from the beginning of this clip to the, to the end. You understand the shocking secret on how you can encounter God in the place of prayer. All right, so what you, sir? Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Good. Yes, 2 verse 15. All right. Let's start again. These men are not drunk. As you suppose. The third hour. Now, can we... What does that mean? The third hour of the day. What does it mean? Do you have a Bible that gives us insight into... What time we're talking about? What? 9 a.m. So you write, write 9 a.m. Yes, next scripture. So this third hour of the day was a time that the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost. Is that clear? Right. We're talking about praying without season. That's, what I'm, that's where I'm going. Yes? Who has the second scripture? Acts 10.3. At about three in the afternoon, this Cornelius, Cornelius had an encounter with an angel, and the time of that encounter, according to human timing, was what? Three, 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 in, the three in the afternoon. That's three p.m. Yes, sir. Okay, so we have the first one's what? Nine a.m. Then we have something for three p.m. Yes. Who is reading another scripture there? And drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray. He went up on the housetop to pray. About the sixth hour. About the sixth hour. What time is that? Twelve noon. That was when he had the encounter uh, that something from heaven descended and all of that and all of that. and all. So look at that very well. You see we have twelve noon. We have nine. We have three. So it's a three, three, three hours interval. Good. So this is the technology. You want to shift, you want to move the hand of darkness back, you must start 12 midnight. You do 12 to 1, you do 3 to 4, you do 6 to 7, you do 9 to 10, and you continue running like that. If you do that, you will migrate. Keep that routine. Keep that routine. Something from God's realm will come into that cycle. It's guaranteed. It's something I do. When I notice that hell has broken loose. 12 to 1. I can, if, if the anointing is still on me for prayer, I can continue. But my contract is 12 to 1. Then I can go and sleep. And then do what? 3 to 4. If the anointing is on me, I will allow it to run. Then I, I, I move again. I move again. You will see God's hand will come into that cycle. It maintain that cycle. His hand will come. That, that's how we receive angelic visitations. Create a time that is based on this routine and God will come into it. The heavens will be open. The Holy Ghost will come down and you can hear the, 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 the voice of God clearly or God will send you an, an angel. Angelic intervention is occasioned by this continuous prayer cycle. Prayer was made without ceasing from the church. A certain man of God that was in my city died. It was when he died that we knew what he was. We normally see him on pulpits and in the crusade. And he has, he, he does this crusade, annual crusade that is massive. But we never knew what he was until he died. We never knew the kind of covering that came over the city because he was alive. It is easy for you to compare yourself to somebody. Because your estimation of the person is what you see him do on the pulpit. Ministry is not pulpit stuff. 
It's a call to priesthood. It will swallow your life. It's a call to an altar. And the altar is a metaphor for sacrifice. So when this man died, darkness began to come over our city gradually. I'm not saying we're not praying, no. But I'm saying that there was a capacity that that man had that made it easy for the territory. And many times, God knows that some people with capacity are about to be called home, and he begins to trouble other people to begin to take steps to migrate so that the kind of capacity they had in the spirit, the, 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 the outgoing generation, can be built in other functionaries that will still remain on ground so that darkness will not take advantage. Because I've seen cities like Benin, when a mighty apostle of God rose and he, he, he did damage to the kingdom of darkness. And when he was taken, there was nobody around that could command the kind of priesthood that he had. Guess what will happen? Darkness comes over the city and the darkness can linger. Oh! Maybe there's a priest in your family, someone that is holding the fault. And many times, this devil makes people not to like such people. It turns the hearts of people against such people that are holding the fault. Uh, if you understand spiritual things, you just know what is happening to you is the opposite of the truth. It will make people hate you if you're an intercessor. So you need to, you need to love them beyond their misunderstanding and fulfill your ministry. This man was taken from our city. And when he was taken from our city, darkness began to come over the land. I was in final year when he died. And I never knew that God was going to send me to that city. But we had this small prayer group and God began to say that the time of darkness was coming and the darkness will last until a new light will rise from among us. Do you know that the most accurate, in my own opinion, and I speak as a man, okay? The most accurate word of God in that time was not on the big pulpit. The most accurate word of God was in little prayer groups where the Holy Spirit had liberty to express his heart. And God gave us that signal that the darkness was coming. But we could not imagine what measure of darkness God was talking about. The darkness was in the fact that somebody was about to be taken home and there was nobody on ground that understood the dynamics of the priesthood that brought light to the territory. And the moment this man was withdrawn from the scene, it was obvious that the things he had built in the spirit, there was no one that knew how to chart his course through the maze of the spiritual edifice that had been built by his life in the Lord. Satan took over everything. When I started my work life after campus, I got posted to the same city. Occultic pastors had taken over the pulpit, prophesying by divination. The spirit that was at work was what Apostle Paul called Python in the book of Acts chapter 16. Priesthoods that were serviced by immorality. All kinds of gimmicks, manipulations. And it was just a few years after the man died that the intensity of darkness was so heavy. And God began to speak to me. The reason why you were posted, because from my office, they posted me to that my city again. The reason why you were posted here is so that you can, you can bear the candlelight. So we started praying. There were creatures like dwarfs that used to visit my house. I know you will not believe. You say, okay, this guy is from Africa. So. Ah, okay. Since you won't believe, let me leave my story. <laughs> Creatures like dwarves that used to visit the room. That was a house that you might just see something. This house that I'm speaking about is sealed. You know what I mean by sealed? I, I, I assure you, sealed. And then I just came out of the room and saw a frog in my living room. All right, so I, I wanted to kill it. The thing just jumped and, and disappeared. 
I know you won't believe it. Say, this, this, African boy, this African boy has come again. I said, what is this? So in order for me not to be afraid, I'll have to pray for like three hours, then faith be stirred up. Faith will be stirred up. I was very, very single then. So all I knew how to do was walk, and when I come back from walk, prayer. I continue. I continue. My neighbors now saw me praying and started joining me. People heard my prayer and started joining. That was how we started the prayer that became the ministry I'm doing today. I was on my knees when Jesus walked through the wall and gave me six signs that will happen before the blanket of darkness over the city is taken away. Each one of them came to pass. And the last of which was that the airport that was grounded in my city that it will become functional again. That was the last, that was the sixth one. And we followed it. And the more we gained ground with prayer, the more even, even the politics in the land shifted. Prior to that time, our Celtic people were the people sitting on that throne. And then we got a tongue talker to sit. It was because the atmosphere priesthood that made it possible. So the devil started losing ground. Even uh, all right, thank you uh, once again for joining us to watch this particular clip by the God servant Apostle Arumi Osai on the reasons um, why some ministers, um, anointed ministers, still be confused in life. And he revealed a shocking secret. And I hope this particular clip really blesses your life so much. So if you do, just click on that red button on the screen and subscribe and like the video and make sure you comment and share it all right thank you so much and stay tuned at matuka tv studio thank you and god bless you amen